This is an unboxing of a Edmonds Scientific Astroscan uh, Telescope, the legend. I think it is this box. Let me just open it and see what it is. Okay, yeah, it's better than what I thought packed. Really packed well, so I'm trying to open this without damaging any of this packaging. And uh, well done, this parcel force has really packed it really well. So I'm going now to open this. I see already a cleaning fabric. And let me do the rest. Okay, it's emerging now from here. Okay, I can see now the whole package can be extracted from here. That's the telescope. I will put it down. I will try to see what is in this compartment. There is a base, I think, there. Let me just remove that. Oh, none of the telescopes I've seen online have this. This is the actual dew shield. And... Of course, this is a fabric cleaner. What is inside here? Okay. I see an astrolabe. Kind of thing. What is this called? Pole finder. Oh, it helps you to find the North Pole. This book is the Stargazing 2016, a guide. And... This is, I think, the eyepiece. Let me just open it. That's the eyepiece with the ring. This is a puzzle eyepiece. Oh yeah, it's more scientific puzzle. Beautiful with the rubber eye cup. What is this? I have to cut. Oh, that's the neck strap for carrying it. Oh, lovely. Good quality. It has all the things that comes with it. And what we have here? Oh, red dot viewfinder. It must be one of the latest ones. It has a red dot viewfinder. Maybe 2000, post 2001. Yeah, it is after 2000. So this is one of the latest, so the mirror must be like new. Okay. Uh, I'll put this away. I'll take the telescope on board. Okay, this is the telescope itself. I'm going to unwrap it. Now. So, and this one layer removed. Another layer, which is this one, also removed. There is a third layer here. Let me just remove this one. Okay, this is the third layer. The telescope looks kind of new, trouble-free. I think this red dot finder probably was uh, attached to the original. Yeah, it looks original. There is no damage to the seam, so it must be one of the later ones. It has been saved in a sunny place, so the paint of this part has gone. It's written important. Warning. Never look at the sun through your telescope uh, it can telescope concentrated sunlight can blind you in seconds yeah thank you for this warning and let me just remove the whole thing from inside and see how it is okay that's a beautiful telescope is coming out and now I will remove the whole wrapping and put them somewhere safe now I have the stand this is one of the cleanest I've seen of the most scientific models so I'm looking forward to open this now with the stand okay, this is the Edmund scientific okay this is the Edmund scientific telescope it's really elegant smooth movement even at this level horizontal level stays there so let me remove this uh, tapes and try to look through the important part which is the mirror okay 
Okay, the elegant. That it goes over here, and then it shuts. I like this style a bit better than the bush now because you can turn it and it locks. This is a Russian tall eyepiece, 25 millimeter. Uh, from the description of the RKE, I've seen that probably this is similar to that. Uh, RKE is tall, 25 millimeter plus. Okay. Look at it. Now I'm going to put it on the telescope. Focus holder. I piss holder, I should say. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. Okay, this is the focuser. Okay, fits there. That's great. I'm going to remove this cap. Let's look through it to something nearby. Impressive bright image. I must say the focusing knob of this is a little bit uh, scary because you feel that it's going to bend any moment. I heard that it's worked by friction, so practically it's just a rubber uh, pressing against another piece of rubber against a cylinder in the focuser. So I will put the plus hole eyepiece in here now just to see how it will be. This is the Edmund Scientific uh, Puzzle, 28mm. This has replaced the original RKA in this model. And let's look through it. As you can see, because there is no edge on the eyepiece, uh, I put the eye guard, rubber eye guard, and now I'm going to look through it. I must say the image is very bright, but you see the central obstruction. So it's better to be used with a lower power eyepiece, higher power eyepiece. Sorry, 20 millimeter, 22 millimeter probably will do well. Let me just see if I can bring one. So this is a Sargaida ED 18 millimeter eyepiece, and I'm putting it the eyepiece holder. It takes it, so I'm going to look through this now. Very clean, neat image. Of course, it's upside down, as you can see. And I have to focus. Yeah, easy to focus on it. Yeah, nice. It's a stable. And the mount is stable. It's holding the telescope well. Really good, impressive telescope. It's beautiful. Let me just bring the Bushnell beside it and see how side by side how they look. Okay, as you can see, the Bushnell is this one, and that is four and a half inch. This is four inch, and uh, Bushnell is slightly taller, around yeah, one and a half inch, and. Uh, the base looks the same size, but the mirror of this is uh, one inch, half an inch bigger. Uh, what is interesting? Okay, I will do side by side comparison in a later video. I've shown you how the image looks. I've shown you also in the past how the image of this one looks. So you can compare from that. But at the moment, I just want Another difference is that for the focuser, uh, you have a screw here. It holds the eyepiece. This one, no, it doesn't have. So if it, it may get knocked down. Uh, so, we must find a way for that. This one takes easily. So, another two differences. Now I've attached the red dot finder and I'm going to observe the planet Venus, which is there. Okay, I have used uh, his own Edmund Scientific uh, Plus Hole 28mm. I have used this Lantanium 
Soligo, two and a half millimeter long eye relief. I piece. This is actually a Vixen. And uh, now I'm using the Oliven zoom lens, and I can say this is really good. Uh, I really recommend this. And now I have zoomed on the high, highest magnification 60 times, which is is capable of and I can see the planet Venus phases with this I must say the mirror of this telescope what I found in the out of focus when I looked at the um, the way that a secondary image secondary mirror image in the in the outline of the star I can say that this is slightly off the collimation it's not much but it is you can see it and uh, the thing is that in this one in the astro scan you cannot collimate it the mirror cannot be collimated, the main mirror, primary mirror. But in the bush tunnel, you can actually collimate that. Well, anyway, that's the way it is. I must say, I must say holding the camera against the eyepiece is very easy. Uh, with the telescope, I can see the phase of Venus. Um, visually, I mean, with this, uh, you see, it's blurred a little bit. The setting, uh, I cannot change the setting for the video, but I can change the setting for the camera. Well, it's quite nice. I can see. What I have found about the AstroScan telescope is that photography through IPS here. So much easier than any other telescope. This is a blackbird, the bird which has a beautiful song. That's a crow you hear. I think in many languages it has different names. Uh, I think they call it Tuka in Caspian Sea region in Persia, Iran. And uh, yeah, Mina also is maybe it's called Mina. I'm using the AstroScan 2001 to with a 28 millimeter plus eyepiece of it. Is she here, Zada? Oh, is it she or he, Susan? Little girl. She's oh, she's a little, little girl. Little brown specks of her. 
Oh, ground specks on her. Brown, oh, brown specks. You can see. Oh, she puffed. And um, when the light shines on her, the feathers reflect blue. Um, you can see the reflection of the feathers. It's a real pigmentation of them. It's beautiful. You can't appreciate beauty until you. So we are in the final lockdown, as David Bowie has said, final countdown, but we think this is a final lockdown. This is the end, this is the one. She's looking for the source of the sounds. Some other singing birds, but when she sings, she has a most beautiful song. <laughs> 